Last time on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Maybe you should put on the lower half of their body first to help bring down the shock a little? It's like, yeah, I kind of, uh, I kind of just don't look down. <laughs> hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. I think I actually got it right that time. Congratulations me, pat me on the back. Uh, send me fruit. I don't know why you'd send me fruit, but that was the thing I said. Anyways, a uh, few things as we start here. First off, if you haven't noticed, you're probably gonna say this in the other LP too, but new outfit for Andromeda going on in the corner now. Her old outfit actually had a bunch of holes in it and problems, and it was a nightmare to work with because it was made in such an unoptimized way. So I was like, hey, uh, let's see what we can work with that is actually, you know, gonna be able to get done. So now she has this cool kind of, um, I don't know, I, think, I, I say it's like a detective, like, police chief outfit. It's kind of cool. I like it, although her back's a little broken right now. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie, like, her chest is pushed out a lot. Like, her back is almost inverted. But you can only see the top half, so that's all that matters. And I can break illusions like these because I'm not a VTuber, and I can say whatever the hell I want. Well, I guess I'm technically a VTuber, but, like, you know, I don't have to do, like, the whole persona and all that. I'm this person and stick to my gimmick or whatever, you know? Uh, <laughs> no offense to any of them out there. They're rad. Secondly, uh, I just want to bring up the fact that... I, I, I can't believe people are still not understanding this about this channel. But there's the fact that a lot of people were like, Zeno, they said this in this episode. How do you not remember that they said this? And it's like, I swear I've gone over this 10,000 times before in other LPs. But it's like, you do have to understand, I've only been playing this game like, uh, up until now that I've been posting, like, regularly. I've only been able to play, like, once a week. And that's just one hour throughout my entire week in which I get to think about the plot. And then the rest of the week goes by. And I remember nothing from it the next time I get there. Like, on top of that, having ADHD also makes it very hard to remember things. Trust me, just ask anyone who has it. Regardless, though... There's a lot of events in the story that aren't making sense to me, that people in the comment section are like, It's so obvious! How do you not understand what's going on? And it's like, I go on Twitter, I'm like, how many of you guys actually know what the hell's going on in this story? And pretty much it's just a show of hands of not me, not me, no clue. So like, I don't know. Some people are comprehending the story very easily. Is where I'm seeing the majority of people are having trouble, much like me. For example, there's one event I think we came across last time in which, uh, Kato, or Kaitaro, Kato, Kaito, Kaito Momota, <laughs> back in V3, um, where Kaitaro Mira was talking to someone, and they talked about, like, oh yeah, the mechs or the Sentinels were at, whoa, the Sentinels were actually made in Japan by our country. And I went, okay, and there's actually another scene that we passed a while ago, maybe an episode or two back, where they were like, hey, actually, the mechs were made in the future and sent back, which is very confusing. Um, and people are like, why is this confusing? Well, when you normally play a video game, you're presented information in order. For example, you're presented with an initial piece of information, and then later on, you are presented with a revelation about said information. But because a lot of these stories can be played in any order, when I hear conflicting bits of information, I don't know which one to take as true. Because any of them could be a lie. And that also makes the story very hard to follow, because one character can say one thing, and another character can say another thing in their story, and... It... It doesn't like to elaborate on any of which is true or which is not, because I am bouncing between 13 characters... Well, maybe not 13, but... A bunch of characters' perspectives, which all see the world differently, all have different opinions on things, and all have been presented with different sorts of facts that I don't know if they are true or not, so... I, I guess, sh long story short, this game's hard as fuck to follow, and don't expect me to understand any of what's going on. Um, maybe there are YouTubers out there who can. I'm not one of them. So, as much as I want to get destruction done, we actually have less of Remembrance done. So why don't we go ahead and do this? And why don't we just go ahead and follow along with what we were doing before? And follow Keitaro's story.
No matter where I am, at least the sunset is always the same. Okay. This place isn't too crowded. Gives me room to hang around and think for a bit. Better take advantage of that. <sighs> Nothing's changed today either. Our mother's terrible at sewing. I'd never. It's people. Okay, we already read this. American weapons. They came ashore during the air raid. They're enormous. Must be over thirty meters tall. Instead of wheels, they move on long leg-like appendages. Quite a terrifying sight. So he is Something still, at hell. this point in time, he's still completely under the impression that the Dymos were American-made weapons. Which makes sense. I'm not saying like he's crazy or anything. You can hardly see any stars in this era. Though I have to say, the city lights are a sight to behold. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there, hiding behind all those elaborate curtains. That's Sentinel. It's what brought me here. Elaborate curtains. Oh, so the Sentinel he's in is actually in that construction building. Or that he came here in. And I don't know if the construction building is just there to mask the Sentinel, if that was what it was built to do, or if they just put it there because it was a good idea. Why were just the Sentinel and I brought here? That thing is beyond me. I'm no expert, but I know it's capable of some extraordinary feats. Time travel, though. Could the Sentinel possess an ability like that? Before the war, my uncle gave me a sci-fi novel, a story about traveling through time to the future. It only ever felt like a far-off fantasy. But on that day, at that moment, that fantasy became a reality. Remember. Oh, here we go. Here's where it starts diverging. Oh my god. These are all different. Whoa! Look how many things we got going on here. Well, welcome to Kato Miura, the episode. Electromagnetic rounds are offline. Outputs drop by 50% in both electromagnetic battering rams. There are just too many of them, but I'm not about to just sit here and die. I still have two minutes before I hit my operating limit. And you guys did say before. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't notice, but they said it initially that's like, you have two minutes to finish the battle. I, I guess I hadn't realized that that was the time limit for every battle and that all this crazy stuff was happening in the span of two minutes. And that kind of blew my mind when they said it in story because I thought it was just like a video game mechanic thing, you know? But no, it's these battles actually happen in two minutes. It, it's kind of like when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. By the way, you can watch our Dungeons and Dragons stream every Saturday at like 7 p.m. ish. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons where every round of combat's only six seconds and you finish combat and you realize like You've been here for about an hour and a half real time, but you've in game. It's been like a minute Usually less Might as well give it everything I got And that's when he got transported. So he got in the robot to protect the city, but then something transported him out. He doesn't understand what that is, or what it might be. Where's the enemy? Did I lose? Yes, they brought the giant robot with you to heaven, Kato. <laughs> no, that, that honestly has to be a rule. If you're a mech pilot and you die, you better be able to bring your goddamn Gundam to the heavens. Like, when you go to greet... Greet God at those pearly gates, you know. Those are what those are called. Um, the, you know, the golden arches. And I don't mean, you know, maybe it's a McDonald's. I don't know. When you go to greet him, 
you better be able to bring your goddamn Hyakushiki Gundam with you, you know? Just saying. <laughs> it reached its operating limit. Where am I? Yada yada does The air raid. Everything was just on fire. All these giant towers with glass windows? What the hell's going on? <sighs> the last thing I remember. All these towers with glass windows. Is he, is he saying that in 1945, all his windows weren't made out of glass, they're made out of cardboard? Or actually, I don't remember the time he came from. It was like 1940-something. Is being surrounded by those new American weapons, and... No. It can't be. American City has been added to Thought Cloud. I've heard about major U.S. cities. These high-rise buildings are common. Was I captured? And they got my Sentinel too? They must have done it when I lost consciousness. Brought me to the mainland as their... No, wait. If the Sentinel just reached its operating limit, then not very much time could have passed. But this view says otherwise. It's not my homeland. Somehow, I ended up on U.S. soil. If that's the case, fine. I guess this is where I'll die. <laughs> He's gonna march into the city ready to die. I'll face the enemy, even without my Sentinel. Uh, the Sentinel. This is bad. The Sentinels are top secret. It can't fall into enemy hands. I love how people keep crashing their Sentinels into highly public places. And they're like, uh, how do we, how do we cover this up? And it's like, you can't. You just can't. can't move the Sentinel now since considering everything it's been through already. I can't expect it to perform at full capacity. Well, just stick a couple AA batteries in there. It should be fine. The enemy cannot get their hands on the Sentinel. That's the kind of issue that becomes a national crisis. But what can I do? I can't activate now, let alone initiate self-destruct. I need to slow down and think things over. I should probably go lie low until the Sentinel recovers. But not because I'm afraid. My country. My little sister. I'd give my life for them at the drop of a hat. But I have to be smart right now. And that means waiting for the Sentinel to be up and running. You know, for for a hat-wearing character to say I'd give my life for them at the drop of a hat scares me. Man, I'd better move fast. I should get out of here before American soldiers show up. I'll stay out of sight until it's the right time to move. <laughs> <laughs> There's just some old lady, like, for afternoon stroll, and she's like, Oh, hello there, Sonny, how are you? And Kato just freaking... Kato just freaking uppercuts this old lady and knocks her out, and she's like, Damn, these, <laughs> these American spies are getting older and older. They've, they've unlocked the secret to immortality. My name's Kato. Everyone here appears to be Japanese. But something's off. Oh, this is Japan. These signs show both kanji and the English alphabet. Oh, okay, he just mistook it for an American city. I see. At first I thought he was actually in America, and I'm like, how did he get to Japan then for all the rest of this stuff? Ashitaba Printing, Ashitaba Bank. Why are they named after my hometown? Ooh, this must be really disorienting, you know. One second you're at war, next second American, American tourists are everywhere. Sure, the one at Sun Mall? Nah, the one at Joyland. Let's go try out those big new Sega machines that came in. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what is this Sega? What is this Sonic the Hedgehog? Whatever it is, it sounds highly irrelevant and like it's slowly dying on its last legs and being paraded around as a corpse. But their language doesn't sound foreign to me. Did you see him in last night's episode? Yeah. Oh, he's so amazing. <laughs> right? I watch everything he's in. Female students. Though that's quite a bit of exposed. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was going to talk about that. He's going to be like, whoa, how are they How are they dressed like that? It almost seems like a different dialect. 
but it's definitely Japanese. There's so much slang going on. I like how he changed his pose. Left, right, left, so right, cars. left, right. Where in the world am I? This isn't America. It looks like Japan, but everything seems off. This is all just a terrible dream, right? Right. It's nothing to worry about, just my brain acting up. That's why my surroundings appear to be different. We knew what the risks were going in as Sentinel pilots. Professor Doji made it all very clear to us. That's right. This has happened before. I experienced a similar illusion during the Sentinel sync test. <laughs> oh, there's some familiar faces. He's wearing a boy's school uniform, but appears to have a girl's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny just seeing the difference in time periods. Huh? Um. The hell are you looking at? This one has a particularly strange hairstyle. Hey, you trying to get your ass kicked? And looks like I've finally gone crazy. Do you want to see crazy? Hey, stop! Did he just get hit in the face with a book bag? No! Ah! How do I always forget to charge this thing? Where am I? Okay, we are back. I apologize for that if there's like any weird cut in the video. But uh, I just had multiple things fall off a stand. That was bad. That was really bad. But we're back now. <laughs> what is this room? Hold on. I think I remember. Wait, he actually hit him so hard he got knocked out? Some guy with weird hair hit me with his bag. This doesn't look like a detention facility. Either I'm still seeing things, or someone removed me from the Sentinel. Whoever it was brought me to some kind of lab. <laughs> oh no. It's a calendar. 1985? It's all in my head. It's just an illusion. A box-shaped Technicolor projection device. The Sentinel has its own spatial projector as well. But that's highly confidential military technology. <laughs> oh no, he thinks the TV is like... Oh man, what are they gonna do with this? Is this some sort of... American torture device? He's just some... Well, I guess he doesn't think it's America anymore. I think he's pretty like... He is, uh... At this point, he seems pretty sure that he's dealing with some sort of Japan that he's not familiar with, I feel. It's about baseball. Baseball? I'm not in a military base, am I? I wouldn't think so, good sir. Japanese. Lots of textbooks lined up here. Japanese history. So I really am still in Japan then. How about we read that textbook? <sighs> this can't be right. 1945. The year of Japan's unconditional surrender. Surrender? We lost the war? 1945. That's this year. August 6th. Atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. 140,000 killed. Three days later, second bomb dropped on Nagasaki. 70,000 killed. All from just two new American bombs. What is this book? 1951, U.S.-Japan Security Treaty signed. 1964, Tokyo Olympics? How far does this go? W wait, what did that calendar say? Said it was 1985, bud. 1985. It has to be fake. When was this printed? It says here, 1985. Could it really be? I just realized he's not wearing shoes. You okay? Here. It's so cold. That's all that was in the fridge. <clears throat> wow. Not a big fan of soda, I take it? Some kind of carbonated beverage? <laughs> I had ramen once at a festival in Tsutsuji, but I was just a kid. 
Well, I, I guess at least he liked it. He's just not used to carbonated drinks, though. I do imagine, though, like... You know, drinking a carbonated drink for the first time must be so weird, because it's, it's definitely something you have to get used to. I don't drink a lot of soda anymore. I'll, I'll have one every once in a while if, if it comes with, like, food I ordered or something. I'm, I'm mainly, like, a tea person. Oh, that's kind of cool. He takes off his hat if you leave him there. But, uh, your first time tasting that, if you hadn't all your life, that would... That would be kind of a shock. It's the way it kind of tastes on your tongue, you know? It's kind of weird that we enjoy carbonated drinks so much. Who are you? I'm Shu Amiguchi, and we're at my apartment in Kamazumi. Keitaro Miura. So, how did I get here? I called a taxi and brought you over after you got knocked out. So you helped me. Guilty. You know, you really pushed Ogata over the edge. He was already pissed from being chewed out. If he gets in trouble one more time, he's getting suspended. Be real nice if you two could work things out peacefully. I need to know one thing. What year is it? Uh, what? Afraid you got knocked into a coma for the last few years? Relax, you didn't get hit that hard. It's still 1985, all right? You haven't missed a day. Oh, it's confirmed. Well, I mean, we know it's confirmed, but he doesn't know that, okay? Uh, either way, though, you know, this is a lot of information for this boy to take in all at once. This is a lot of stuff to just soak up. And we can still go, so I want to go and figure out everything else. I'm actually, I think Keitaro's story so far is my favorite. At least on premise alone. The idea of, like, a World War II soldier getting sent straight to the future, hearing about all of no the horrific am, things that happened. At least the sunset is always the same. And then just having to deal with the fact that... Wait, why is the Sentinel gone now? Oh, that's right. You guys said that, like, each of these is a different day. I checked the library for any records of such a weapon, but in all of history, nothing like it has ever existed. Not in the U.S., not anywhere. What was that thing? Before the war, my uncle gave me a sci-fi novel. A story about traveling through time to the future. It only ever felt like a far-off fantasy. To think it ever become a reality. I don't care that we lost. I'm proud my country could rebuild after what happened. Okay, I am honestly, like, really happy with the way this character outlooks on things. I, I was almost certain that this character was going to be... Oh my god. You know, I, I can't believe we gave up to these American scum and he was gonna, like, run into the future being gun- like, gung-ho. Full hatred on America. You know. But no, he's actually, like... He's kind of taking it in stride. Like, it's, it's a lot to take in that there's a massacre in your time that happened. But, you know, his outlook is very mature, we'll say. But I won't accept this future. Now that I know we lose the war, that's all the more reason to go back. I'll bring the Sentinel with me. And I'll change history. It's my duty to fight and protect the people. Uh -oh. I have to save as many of them as I can. <sighs> But what if it's impossible for me to go back? What if I'm trapped here, Shihiro? All right, that's enough. Get it together. Don't get discouraged. You will make it back. No matter what it takes. Hmm. I wonder. What if I never actually traveled through time? It's possible that space-time here is warped somehow, but it could just be a local effect. I should try heading toward the school. Maybe time is flowing normally over there. Okay, well, looks like today we're going to the high school. Which is gonna look a lot more wrecked than he remembers. Female students. Looks like the school's still here. <laughs> Is 
Isn't that... Hey, hold on! <laughs> Miyorkun? Thank goodness! Okay, so they do recognize each other. You're Natsuno Minami, right? The one I met at the shrine. What are you doing here? I've gotta say, you had me pretty worried. I had no idea where you went. I just... I can't believe you're here too. I couldn't find you anywhere. I thought you got snatched up and hauled off to Area 51. But anyway, what have you been up to? Wait, first... Where have you been? <sighs> A kind student's been letting me stay at his place. Aside from that, I've been sleeping outdoors. Outdoors?! What? I bet he's thinking, like, can you put on some pants? Can you be normal? Natsuno-san, get it together, Keitaro. She certainly is quite... Yes, I admit, she's bright, cheerful, attractive. Oh, he's got a crush. But right now, I have more urgent matters to tend to. Hang on, this is my mess, so I have to figure out how to clean it up. But then again, I can't really bring a boy into the house. Oh, yeah. Granny Tamal went on a trip, so Juro-kun should be the only one Oh, home. no. That house does have a lot of rooms. Granny Tamal? Oh, no. She's gonna drop a second one off of Juro's house. That's why he was there initially. Uh, sorry. Let me go grab my stuff really quick. I'll be right back, so just wait here. Then we'll head over to the Karabe's house. Karabe? She, wait, does she just never wear like normal school attire? Is she just always in their like sportswear? <gasps> wait, what? She's a little sister. Managed to leave quite the dent. He used to live here. This was his old home. Chihiro. You don't have to cry. It's not like you did this on purpose. I'm sure Uncle isn't mad about it anymore. What about you? Are you mad? Of course not. I'm your big brother. I'll always be on your side, Chihiro. Now, come on out. Oh, she left a little crack on the post and Uncle got mad. So how do you hit the pillar with the laundry bucket? You must have been playing pretty rough. The bunny was biting. And it beat up giant ghosts, because the ghosts smash all the houses, and more of them keep coming. Such strange ghosts. Did you come up with them yourself? No, Tamao told me about them. I'm sorry, Chihiro-chan. My father has quite a short temper. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is Tamao herself. I'm sorry. This was all my fault. Tamao-san... It only happened because I told Chihiro-chan about my dreams. Aw, oh, there's just nothing to play. Oh, I love how she follows you around. That's super cute. Is it okay for you to be awake right now? Mm-hmm. I've been feeling much better lately, and I have Goto-san from Tokyo to thank for that. He's been sharing some foreign medicine with me. It's just that, ever since I started taking it, I keep having strange dreams. But they feel like more than just dreams. They're like memories that I just suddenly remember. I don't know how this could happen, but I'm thinking it's a possibility that whatever drug <laughs> Goto is having her take... The oh, there's the air raid siren. That whatever drug Goto is having her take... Cause we have a couple of drugs in play here already. We have the ones that erase people's memories. You know. I, I don't know if we're dealing with all the same one or if there's different ones, because... It seems like probably the memories that she has... I don't know, it's hard to say. I'm gonna say there's one drug for now, because that's all we truly know. But there must be drugs that counter the drugs that already exist. This is bad. Turn on the radio. Gotcha. This military broadcast. Air raid alarms have been sounded. 
Enemy is flying at low altitude. More air units to be expected to prepare against the coming invasion. We ask all citizens to unite as we fortify our air defenses. It's a massive enemy raid. We have to hurry to a bombproof shelter. Come on, Chihiro-chan. We have to go. Jiro-kun! Are you home? Minami-san. She never, ever changes out of her sportswear. Couldn't you have knocked first? Come on. Your Granny Tamao and I are best buds. We're neighbors. Think I don't know my way around the place? Anyway, I've got a favor to ask. Oh, Minami-san. I didn't know you lived so close. Did you really need to come out? You're Yakushiji-san, our classmate? Wait, no way. Are you two... Do you need something from him? <sighs> it's not what it looks like. This is just... <sighs> you know, Natsuno-san? Oh, come on in. Pardon my interruption. This is very polite. Despite a catastrophic loss, Japan recovered quite well. It seems to have entered a prosperous new era. Almost too prosperous. <sighs> so this house is still standing. Who are you? My name is Keitaro Miura. So, um, it's kind of complicated, but yeah, I need you to let him stay over for a few days. Okay, yeah, we already went through this scene before, but now we have a lot more context. This is the kind of stuff I wanted to get around to that really, like, cements how the events happen in my mind. When you see multiple of the same event happen through different people's eyes, that really... Like, right now, things are actually connecting in my brain. Things don't seem so far... You know, removed from one another. Because a lot of these characters, I'm still having trouble figuring out how their freaking stories are going to mix together at the end of the day. Like, there are some that are going to have an obvious effect. Like our good friend over there shooting people with their magical cat gun. But then there's others that's like... You know, Yakusoba Pon over here. I can't remember his name for the life of me. But like... That guy just showed up, and I don't know what effect he has on literally anything so far. But we'll see. What? How do you know Minami-san? Come on, I know you have a spare room. Just let him stay until your granny's back. In exchange, I won't tell anyone you're living with a girl. <laughs> That's not- The details don't matter. Just let him stay, alright? Thanks, see ya! Having these two under the same roof is kind of dangerous. Natsuno-san, is this... It's fine, it's fine. I live super close by, so if you need anything, just let me know. There she goes. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> you betcha. You have Megumi the murder psycho. And then... Well, I guess we better say hi. Pardon me. I know Natsuno-san's intentions are good, but I really don't want to be an inconvenience. Are you hungry? Why don't you join us for dinner? No, I shouldn't. Your stomach thinks you should. No, that was, uh... I'll go fix you a plate. She does seem generally to be a nice person, though. Like, she is not, like... A lot of other, like, visual novel characters where it's like, if anyone gets near the person I love, they need to die. No matter what, like, she seems to be still... You know, every other human being on the planet still matters. So, Tamao-san is your grandmother? Is she in good health? Grandma? She's fit as a fiddle. She's visiting relatives back in Shimane. That's why she isn't here. Shimane? She must be with her mother's side of the family in Iwami. Do you... know my grandma? Yes, you do, huh? So then? How long do you need a place to stay? Not long. Just until I can make my way back home. Well, alright. If that's the case, it shouldn't be a problem. Just try not to cause any trouble. Feel free to use the guest room on the first floor. Thank you. Cool. He's down with us, staying. 
Much appreciated. There's a projection device where the radio used to be. It's been lightly remodeled, but it's the same house. I could have sworn it burned to the ground. Burned to the ground. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make that Mega Man reference. All right. Well, uh, which do you want to? What do you want to talk about? We have a lot in common. Like, um, do you kids still? Uh, do the kids still play foosball. Is that a thing? Tug of war? What do you do nowadays? <laughs> I feel like I'm playing, you know, Hello Fellow Kids, the character. Is the dent fixed? The damage on this pillar is missing, and it wasn't changed when they remodeled. If this really is the Karabe's house, then it should be right here. Chihiro left a dent in this pillar. Hmm. The plot thick. Okay, we're back in space. By the way, I checked on this in the timeline list as far as when this goes. This is the very, like, this space section is the very last bit of information to happen. Like, if you go on the timeline where you can see everything in order, this is at the very end, or at least this conversation, um, he has. Back on my parents' property, there was a wooden single-story house. It was built in the middle of the 20th century. That humble little place stood for about a hundred years. My grandfather often told me stories about it. Okay, so this is to Mal. Some of his fondest childhood memories were at that house. That sounds lovely. I'll have it produced for you. You will. But all I have left are old. I'll have it produced for you? What? Is are, are they in like some sort of artificial living facility? Like some sort of planet that or mechanical thing that's supposed to emulate Earth? I don't Weird. Photographs. That's fine. I can restore them for you. And also, how is she alive? Like, this said it was 2188. I am so confused. Thank you, Mira -san. I'm looking forward to it. Oh. Were you just on a call with someone else? With Professor Karabe, yes. We were discussing the layout of the residential zone. Residential zone. Oh, that's right. Professor Karabe was born in the 21st century. She's 120 years old, right? Um... Did I read the date wrong? She's born... Okay, so... This is a different one. This is not the same one. Got it. I know that she's receiving nanomachine treatment, but... She still looks so young. She's Professor Morimura's mentor, I hear. Quite an intelligent individual. Well, yeah. She is the foremost expert on AI, after all. Right. Anyway, is something wrong? Why does something have to be wrong for me to call? Well, I just so happen to have a really urgent problem. I need emotional support stat. And I need it from you. Oh, that does sound urgent. Then I'll be waiting. That has to be some sort of, like, space-bound colony. You know? Uh, so to unlock this... Huh. Well, I mean, we might as well continue. I have it ready. You know, might as well try to continue with this plot. Since we're just spending this episode focusing on Kaito, Kato, Katado, Tomato. No matter where I am, at, at least the, the sunset, sunset is, is always, always the same. same. I met Natsuno-san over at the shrine. She ended up dodging my question. What was she doing there? She attends the same school as Jurokun. At least that's what he told me. The 
kid that lived next door to us was killed in an air raid. Children in this era don't have to worry about that. The kid that children in... Am I supposed to go somewhere? Nothing's changed today either. He still hasn't explained where the sentinel went. Like, he talked about there being a sentinel hidden in the building. Like, that's where it was put. So I'm guessing that's where to figure out how to he take put it back. back. The sentinel. Then I can find a way to return to 1945. Okay, take back. That means that Though, someone has control of it. I've tried countless times, too. I hope I didn't break it. If there's a mechanical issue, I'd love to take a look at it. But security around the building's been tight lately. Now I can't get too close. I can't just sit here. Actually, that factory at the mountain pass may have survived the air raid. It might still be standing in this era. Oh, is that the same factory that Yakusoba Pond went to? I'm sorry I don't remember his name. It's super long. Playground. This is so pretty once again. Like, can't get over how pretty this game is sometimes. Even if I don't understand what's going on half the time. Ayame Park. This is where the factory used to be. Natsuno-san. <sighs> get it together, Keitaro. She's... I admit... Well, it's not I what we wanted to think about. Who is this? Chihiro? Is it really you? What business do you have with my little sister? Who are you? I'm that child's older brother. Is there something you need from her? No, she just looks like a relative of mine. Mm. Let's get going. Well. That was awkward. Also, you do have to realize, like, the difference in time periods. Like, how do, how do I say it? I feel like in 1945, if you saw, like, some random kid or, like, kid talking to an adult, you'd just be like, oh, it's a kid talking to an adult. It happens all the time. But, like, in the 1980s, like, the perception of that changed so much. Like, you have to be so protective of your children. It's just kind of how it has to be. So it's like... You know, some of these simple, uh, simple conversations seem really dangerous. Shihiro, if she's still alive, she'd be over 40 by now. If she's... We don't have a family burial plot where I'd find her. I have no idea what's happened to her. She's either alive somewhere in this world, or... <sighs> Shihiro, I'm going to find my way back to you. I checked the library for any records of but in all of history, not in the U- What? I saw when the war supposedly ends in that history book, August of 1945, if that's true. And Japan loses the war in just three months. Alright. Where do we go now? In any case, I should go talk to Natsuno-san. She must know something. Okay, guess we're gonna go look for Natsuno again. I was about to say, is that all this route consists of? Going to the park and then being like, hey, get away from my sister, you creepazoid. And then it's like, route end. Sakura High School. It looks nothing like the school I attended. Of course it doesn't, Sally. Are any of these even new? Despite a catastrophic loss, it seems to have entered a prosperous and almost two. Before the war, my uncle the store hit on to Why were just the Sentinel and I brought here? That thing is beyond me. I'm no expert, but I know it's capable of some extraordinary feats. Time travel, though. Could the Sentinel possess an ability like that? If she's... We don't. I have no idea. She's either alive somewhere or. 
Our mother's terrified. Wait, why was that a new thought? He literally just thought what we went through a second ago. Whatever. Let's go to the school grounds, I guess. It's still here. It's been renovated, but I do recognize this building. Yep, so when we were just in when we started this uh is the school building. Kataro's route. Then over there's where the potato field used to be. Looks like that plot of land got bigger. I wonder if there's a way in. Probably just walk in the front door. I don't think there's anyone guarding it. It seemed like literally anyone was able to just walk inside. There's no one here. Do they not use this building? Wooden this school building. This building was brand new. Now the floorboards creak. The pillars are all scratched up and really has been 40 years. <laughs> oh no, it's a ghost. Never mind. This is where I waited for Takatoshi-san, and where Tamao-san came to see me off. Oh yeah, Takatoshi! How it almost that was feels his name. like it was all just a distant dream. Alright, enough. This isn't the time to be getting sentimental. How many places are we going to travel to in just this one little trip? The cat. Oh, Miracon. Megumi-san, thank you again for the bento you gave me. I found a nice spot to eat it by the Kaide River. A bento with meatballs. Quite luxurious. I was very impressed. Oh, they were just regular old meatballs. Nothing special. But I'm glad you liked it. What are you doing out here? Are you looking for someone? What are you doing out here? Are you looking for some? Oh, we are waiting for Natsuno. I'm trying to find Natsuno-san. Would you happen to know where she is? Minami-san? She should be in the track room. The athletic building's over that way. Want me to go check? No, that's okay. Oh, yeah. So for dinner tonight, I think I'll make Hamburg steak. You seem to really like it. You mean that giant ball of meat? The giant ball of meat. Hamburger meat, yeah. It's Jiro's favorite. So try not to come home too late. Aw, uh, she seems really down with him staying there for a couple of days, like... Natsuno it's kind of changing my perspective of her. I kind of expected her to be like, Oh, he's ruining our paradise, you know, or something like that. Maybe it's because I've just become... Don Gun Rumpa's kind of tainted me staring at on me. how I think characters will act. Kind of crazily, maybe. Same for I, the Somnium Files. Maybe my expectations of Japanese characters has just become a little ridiculous. I'm glad I found Natsuno-san. But I don't like all this attention. Hey, you. Oh, no. What up? You've been standing there an awfully long time. What are you doing? I'm waiting for Natsuno Minami. Minami? How do you know her? And how old are you? Looks like a middle school uniform to me. No, uh, I'm, uh... Seriously? You guys have to be so nosy. Natsuno-san. Come on, let's go. See you later, losers. So, Minami's got a boyfriend, huh? <laughs> Hamburger? Hamburger? <laughs> and yes, I realize Andromeda crashed a while back and it makes me sad, but really? Hamburger? Okay, whatever you say, video game. We'll go with Hamburger. Those meatballs they call Hamburger. I know it's not that funny. It's really not that funny, but it's so funny to me. I've never had anything so delicious. Enough. This is no time to be distracted by food. Sorry I took a while getting changed. It's fine. I said I'd wait. So, whenever you exercise, you all change into outfits that show your legs? That's... fascinating. <laughs> anyway, you kind of showed up at school out of nowhere. Everything okay? <laughs> I want to talk about Hamburger. Nothing is more important. Natsuno-san. 
I met you before. Back, back in, in 1945. 1945. And now, here you are. Huh? You must know something about all this. About how I ended up in this era. Please, tell me what you know. That's, uh... Jeez, how do I put this? <laughs> Look, I can't really talk about it here. Then let's go somewhere else. We could go to the building I used back in my time. It seemed to be empty. The old school building? We can go in there? Yes. It was open. Alright. Then we'll talk about it there. Let's go. So much information. Just in this one character story. I always thought this place would be locked up. We should be good here. Miyura-kun, can you keep a secret? Uh, of course. Okay. <laughs> then I'll tell you. Don't freak out, okay? This is BJ. He's an alien from the future. <sighs> this is a lot to take in. BJ's looking for the robot he used to get here, and I'm helping him find it. A uh, robot? Does the word sentinel ring a bell? <laughs> that sentinel from back in 1945 belongs to BJ's alien friend. There are a few of them, too. Okay, good. That does confirm that they are from... At least somewhere in the future. How does she know about the sentinel? And did she say it was made by aliens? It's a top-secret military weapon created by Japan. I don't need to tell you this. But those babies are capable of time travel. So is time travel like the emergency, you know, procedure that goes off when the pilot is about to die? That kind of seems like what it is. It seems like when a pilot's put in critical condition, the mech is just kind of set to send them to time in the future, you know? I don't care who's responsible for creating the Sentinel. I need it to save my country. But what do I do? The circuit should have repaired itself by now. But I can't seem to reactivate it. The true patriot, Kato. This... BJ. I have some questions about it. <laughs> Sorry! I'm being a mature adult right now, okay? I'm being a very mature adult. I've heard Shikishima engineers talk about something like this. Isn't this actually a type of scout unit? Shikishima? They don't dabble in alien technology. All they do is make weapons, and BJ is no weapon. But... Kitaro. Miura. If he's just a scout unit, explain how he can talk. Don't be a jerk, Miura-kun. BJ isn't some kind of robot. This is just a spacesuit. Aliens come in all shapes and sizes. My guess is, the only thing inside that suit is BJ's brain. So, you're an alien? Interesting. I love how he's never confirmed that he's an alien, he's just completely assumed it. Why are you searching for the Sentinel? What's your objective? To uncover the truth. The truth? You wish to know where you came from, do you not? What are you talking about? I came from 1945. Incorrect. Your log proves otherwise. My log? Yeah, show us. Log? This log, if you really have it, I'd like to see it. Professor, I have switched over to a private channel. Professor Takamiya, can you hear me? Is that... Miura code? Professor Takamiya. Whoa. I'm connected now. Thanks, Miura-kun. What the heck? Takamiya. Yuki-chan? No way. She looks rad. Everything goes smoothly with the shuttle? I was able to secure a seat, thanks to you. It'll probably be the last shuttle. This place will be lost by tomorrow, too. Has the front line advanced that much already? Afraid so. If anything, they're picking up speed. Did Natsuno get out safely? She arrived in Sector 4 about five hours ago. Ah, so she's there with you. You know, you two. I never approved of your relationship. <laughs> what? Mom! There's my girl. Wait, mom? What is it for the... I can't! I can't! This is too much information! 
Excuse. Uh, so, in the future, Yuki is her mom, and Kate, Kate Kitaro, actually Kaido. Kate, uh, it's actually from 2188. What? Why? You know I'm only kidding. I didn't think you wanted to talk to me anymore. Of course I do. I'm sorry about all the trouble with your father. He and I haven't been on good terms. Since Who's dad? It's okay, Mom. I want to be with you. I know. Me too, Nanchan. Yuki-chan's my mom? I'm sorry, Professor Takamiya. The shuttle's about to take off. All right. I'll see you at Sector 3 in 14 hours. We'll be waiting for you at Landing Zone 10. Looking forward to it. The destruction is spreading. It's only a matter of time until the surface is lost. So they basically gave up on the planet. What the heck was all that? <sighs> that was just a segment of the log I've retained. I have to know. When was that log recorded? In the year 2188. That doesn't make sense. How is this even possible? Yuki-chan's my mom in the future? That means that they're both from the future. Whoa, there's so much stuff. We're only at 50% of Mira's story? Alright. Oh yeah, Yuki. She looks awesome. Like, legit, my favorite, like, character design so far is Yuki. I know she's your basic, like, you know... She, she looks like your basic kind of badass hooligan in your Japanese animu. But she still looks rad. I like it. I also really like Kitaro's. And my brain froze so hard, I wasn't able to actually, like... I wasn't able to process anything. So we're about 50% through Kitaro's story. Which means next episode, I think we'll actually be able to finish it. Because if this is 50%, that means these other three are the other half of this story. Man, we learned so many things. And I actually understand them for once. I actually understand what's going on for once. A little bit. So the revelation we've learned. And I'm starting to think is that this is all some sort of simulation. This is all some sort of simulation on some created space colony. Because, I know this is a stretch, but just hear me out. We were talking about the pillar that was damaged, and he said it, it was damaged, but it was never repaired or replaced or anything, and it's not looking the same. That means there was some sort of anomaly. And my guess is that I don't, I don't even know if the time travel thing is real, but they are constructing some sort of, I guess, like, fake space station, and they're erasing everyone's memories to just try and live there in peace, and try to forget about the whole alien invasion thing? I don't know. That's just my theory, which is probably way off track, but it's still so, so much to think about. So both Keitaro and Minami are from future. Or, I should say, Natsuno is from the future. And that means her last name is actually Takamiya. Well, maybe not, because sometimes you change your last name and you get married. Either way, though, pretty neat stuff going on here. I can't wait to get to some of this other stuff. Because we could also, in the story, we actually have access to both Iori and Megami's routes, but I think I want to finish Keitaro's while I have it all fresh in my mind, you know? Get it done with, and then we'll move on to one of these two. Or perhaps I'll do more of the destruction missions next. Other way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Man, the series is like gotten infinitely more interesting for me this episode. Because I have to admit, this game takes a little too long to get going. And I don't mean that in a bad way, and I'm not impatient. Like, I am a person that reads, you know, 1,000 page epic fantasy novels. I've read like the entirety of The Wheel of Time and that is a slow series and, you know, I, I have the patience to sit through these things. But 
this game takes a long time to get going to a point where you can understand it and actually appreciate what is going on with the plot. Like, I think we're on, what episode are we on? We're like on episode 10, 9? And I feel like I'm finally just starting to understand what is happening around here. Um, even the, in the smallest bits, you know, it gets me excited for the story's gonna go, but this is not gonna be a short LP. This is definitely not going to be a short story. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like, and I will see you guys on the next one. Right now.